All right, we'll get started here in a minute. 610. If anyone here would like to speak, I don't uh, think I see any public comment cards, but we just ask you to please fill out a uh, public speaker card in the back. Do we have to write it to the Sheriff's Department? And we'll give you an opportunity to speak. Council, and we are a council now. Are we ready to get started? I did, yes. Oh, wait a minute. We didn't change? We didn't. Okay. Oh, we're missing Lisa. That's why. Yes. I think it'll be okay. Yeah, that's okay. We can handle it. This is not difficult. This is not a difficult assignment. <laughs> we are in duty to the process. We got it. We can multi we can multitask too, staff. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Call this meeting to order. It is 6:10 p.m. August 8th. We are here for our city council budget workshop. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Raymond, would you please lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. City Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Davis? Here. Councilmember Kellum? Here. Mayor Morrison? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Raymond? Here. Councilmember Willis? Here. All right, this public participation portion of the meeting, any member of the public may address any items that do not appear on the agenda. If so, please fill out a speaker card as we were saying earlier. I don't have any up here now. We are not live streaming for this uh, budget workshop. And so uh, if anyone here would like to speak, Please raise your hand. Seeing none, go ahead and close public participation, bring it back to the council. We have a discussion item tonight, which is the proposed fiscal year 2023-2024 budget and five-year capital improvement plan. City manager. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Thank uh, you. Th this is our first public hearing on the budget, the adoption of the proposed budget, the, this second workshop, not the public hearing yet. That's what's on the, okay, no, you're right. Second workshop. Um, to discuss the um, proposed budget, we already established a tentative proposed millage rate um, of 3.5716. And um, as, as council will recall, you cannot go above that, but you can go below that. Uh, this provides for one point, or sorry, 6.45, 0333 uh, budget levy, so that's 6,450,333, which is an 11.15% 11 11 increase based on an uh, increase of assessed values of 11.15. It is a um, change in revenues of 15.6%, but I want to stress there that we a lot of that increases because we have new development that came onto the tax rolls, and of course new development also requires more services. So um, we're thinking about this in terms of the, the millage rate and the, the budgetary items that we're presenting. We've got the items that uh, council wants to see moving forward, which are no decrease in level of service. Uh, some other notable things, um, we do have included in here the full-time IT position, which was pushed on the road last year. Uh, we would really like to get that person on board here. A lot of other cities have two and three people in their IT departments. We have one contracted person. We think we can bring the expense of that down and also bring up some of our own core competencies by doing that. We'll um, eliminate some potential other expenses for AV video production, et cetera, and IM Solutions is doing a fantastic job, but we'd like to get away from reliance on them for that, so that, I, that IT position would help with that. This budget also provides for the uh, all of the items that were presented in the strategic planning retreat approved by City Council. 
Um, we do know that there's going to be some unexpected costs. Uh, the Veterans Memorial Park is definitely one of them. I think we all got some sticker shock out of how much it costs uh, to build things these days. So I, I expect we'll see some other instances of sticker shock. So for that reason, we need to keep a close eye on having a healthy contingency because that's how we get through a lot of those shocks and whoops that happen throughout the year. So John, is, I've asked him to be prepared to talk about that contingency and where we should be, where, what we want to maintain. And then uh, just keep in mind that this is the, the budget that was developed based on city council's wishes, the things that you, you told us you wanted to do. Um, so the, the millage rate is set to make that happen. Um, and Mayor, if it's okay with you, I'd like to turn it over to John to add some more detail and also talk about having a healthy contingency and, and why we want to do that and what it should be at, Mayor. Yes, please. Thank you. Well, I think what we've seen this year, where I had given council last meeting, last workshop, uh, where there were $258,000 approximately of unbudgeted items that came up. Um, just give you an example. Uh, we had to put a fence up over near the C5 around the splash pad, splash pad because of all the vandalism and all the, you know, all the, what, what was happening over there, which was really, really sad. So, but that's safer for the children and it also preserves the integrity of that splash pad. And, um, these things continue, and, and just even as we speak now, um, the air conditioning upstairs, as you know, was out uh, the last couple of days, and it's going to require some dollars that we didn't expect because we got some bad coils uh, that affect the second floor on that air conditioner. And um, <laughs> we had some plumbing issues upstairs, uh, which are being resolved, but that costs more money. None of that was budgeted. Um, so these things come up. Um, in the in the past, of course, this won't we won't even come close to doing this because we got set already at a certain tentative millage rate of three point five seven one six. Is uh, you know typically you like to go in with a four or five hundred thousand dollar contingency. Um, there's just so many unknowns that happen during the course of a year, and this year where we're at right now is two hundred thousand. And based on council uh, council's um, uh, decision tonight uh, to move that EV charger to the um, the costs over to uh, the general fund, we're we're estimating that that's going to affect us by about 48k. So that's extra cost. So we could th that that could be the lowest since I've been here in 10 years, the lowest I've seen a contingency in 10 years. $150,000. So with that being said, though, um, we, we are, if we hold at the tentative proposed millage of 3.5716, what's the result of that? Well, based on council's um, uh, decision to use ARPA funds for Veterans Park, if we stay there, we get Veterans Park, we get everything to council asked at the strategic retreat that's been put in this budget. And although the contingency is low, because now that's really where we're at, um, uh, we still get a budget that, that contains everything that uh, council uh, recommended for the year. So actually, I mean, aside from the contingency not being three or $400,000, then you know it's it's a it's a good budget, and I think the thing we just got to be wary of when we go to try to do rollback or go to lower millage rates, we kind of put ourselves in in jeopardy of having to use funds for the unknowns. Like for instance, if something was to happen this year, let's just say it costs us 400k, then um, the city manager would be coming to council saying uh, we're going to have to use unobligated reserve. And as you know, we have 20%. That's 20% based on the policy we have at the city. So if we had to go, say we needed $400,000, you know, that might result in us coming under the 20% that 
is our, in our code to hold, but that's not saying council can't do that. Of course, council could do that if, it, if it's driving um, emergency things that have to be done in the budget or, of the budget or that's required, so. But it just, it just puts us there as we're eating away at our rainy day funds, so to speak, in case, God forbid, something terrible happens. And um, uh, we just need to be careful that as we go forward, we don't try to stay too low on the millage because this is gonna catch up with us and it's gonna even get worse. So it, um, it's just gonna eat away at us. But other than that though, if we stayed at the 3.5716, this budget as you see as looks in front of you, the only thing that really would change would really be, uh, partly would be the contingency maybe down to 150, uh, 150,000. And the last comment would be lowering the millage in any way will reduce the amount of money we have in the general fund and it would pretty much evaporate. <laughs> we would not have a contingency. So we gotta be very careful there. Okay, thank you. City manager, anything else? I just wanna add that our, our city has come a long, long way. Um, I've been here for 20 years as an employee and I've seen it grow so tremendously. We've got a beautiful community center. Cape Center will be opening. We've got the Presidential Streets Master Plan happening. The, the Stormwater Initiatives on Center Street and Veterans Memorial Park coming in. We're, we're in such a better place as a city. Um, and I know that our residents are grateful for those things. And, and people move here because we've done those great things. We've spent money judiciously. Um, we've slowed down on the big capital projects, but this is still a, a great place to live. And when you think about what we have to offer compared to the other cities, I'm, I'm looking at the chart here on page 80 where we rank us with all the other cities in um, Brevard County. And we're the third lowest millage rate pr at proposed at 3.5716. We've been there for a long, long time. And I think that's something we should celebrate, really crow about, that we're able to provide all those improvements in this city over my 20 years here and still be the third lowest millage rate. It's just an incredible thing, and I'm very proud of where we've come there. Thank you. Council? I'll start with a few. Yes. Um, I'd like to thank Jen and, and John for putting up with me and all my questions. But I do have a few more. Um, on page eight, uh, Cape Canaveral Community Redevelopment. Um, a hundred thousand represents a transfer from general fund to the civil hub, uh, civic hub pro product, project. Excuse me. Um, why did we do that? Because the, didn't we have 250000 left from the loan? We for do. The... However, what's budgeted for next year in the Civic Hub is 150000 mm -hmm. So that's why we only moved one fifty over. Okay. If you look at page... Um, let's see here. Let me find it. The CIP. That's all, we, that's all we're using. Great. So it's for demolition. CIP uh, CR2, what page? which is on page 126. Um, the only thing we have uh, budgeted for this next fiscal year is 150,000. So in the next year, if we spent more on the Civic Hub, we would, we would transfer over that additional 100,000 that's left from the loan. Oh, okay. But I thought that the loan funding was, we had 250,000 left. We do, however, because we're only using 150 next year, we would only transfer that amount over oh. for this next fiscal okay, year. Gotcha. And then the following year, if we start spending money on the Civic Hub, the first 100,000 would be spent to finish up that loan. Gotcha, okay. And then the um, 619,713 contingency 
will be used for the presidential street projects. Is that this year or will that stay I there? think you're looking at the old copy again, Mickey. Right. Oh, what page I, are you on? I'm on eight, page eight. The contingency of 446051 NCRA? Yeah, no, I think no. you have a dip. I think, I think you still have, copy. I think you're okay. looking Mickey. at your previous yeah. copy. Right now, the CRA has a contingency of 446051, and that will be, that will go up now that we're not using the EV charger. Okay. Okay, um, let's see. On page... many notes here um, page 23 mm. I was curious about you know we were talking about the recreation center and the c5 and and all that um, where it says Friday fest revenue 42,750 is, and there's nothing in the years prior. Did we not? Right. Well, I, I moved the general ledger out to make more detail, to have like just a Friday Fest. Mm -hmm. It was always put in with, I don't find it. Yep. Um, Looks like it. Maybe it was put in with parks and recreation. Or miscellaneous. Or recreation. Oh, here it is up here. Probably, I don't. I wouldn't even know. Okay. It, well, it, it was. It, yeah, it was. It was in it another. Was, yes. It was, it was combined with something else, so yes. we broke it out so we could be more transparent, and you could say, well, geez, how much are we getting? You know, how much do we really realize from right. Friday Fest? Is there any cost for Friday Fest? Staffing. Um, well, well, the, the staffing would be the personnel cost that people are working their, you know, their their jobs. Uh, as far as a cost, though, um, Molly, 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 Molly maybe cover that, but most of it's revenue coming in. Right. Yeah, and but we do have to pay for the um, the beer and the alcohol. She could break it down for you. Yeah. Um, and also, it, yeah, I wanted to know if that comes from the beer concession plus the rentals there, you know, for the booths and so the. Expenses that are associated with Friday Fest include the um, temporary crossing at A1A, the band, the insurance and actual products sold at our beer booth for our months, mm -hmm. which are November, uh, October, November, December, and then we also pay the band, and if I didn't say that one already, and we also pay for the portable restrooms out front. Mm -hmm. And where does that money come from? The general fund? The general fund. Well, because in the CRA, you can pay for the Friday Fest through the CRA for things that are for the community. The CRA money can that's, pay for that. That's a special event and just special activities. So uh, we don't delve that way with the, uh, with the, um, the Friday Fest. We, we haven't moved. It's just that's not been our practice. That would, I mean, again, that would be something that I don't. I would go to the. Uh, I go to the auditors and say, we want to use this. I don't think th that that falls under the general fund. All the revenues that come in the general fund fund all the departments. Okay, excluding of course, the enterprise funds is different. That's right. wastewater, stormwater, but I am and all the other. Departments. That's funded by the general fund. That's what pays. That's what funds our paychecks. That's what funds our operational costs. Our capital. But, you know. But capital what projects. I'm saying is, like um, farmers markets and stuff like that, are, that are done in the community can be funded through the CRA. I, I've heard of some of that happening. Other cities have done street parties, but they've also. I recall they've fallen under fire. Dave, you might know more about this than I do, but. They've, they've been criticized for using CRA funds for promoting parties, street parties and events like that because it doesn't, I don't think it hits to the heart of removing slum and blight. Mm. <clears throat> okay. 
Um, I think that's it I have right now. I have a couple more, but I'll let somebody else talk. Thank you. So uh, I'll just piggyback off one thing. So the, the, the Friday Fest revenues, I appreciate you breaking that out in a line item. I think that detail is helpful, and that's, that's great. Um, where did the revenue, did we figure out where the revenue was prior? Was it miscellaneous income? No, I think it was under the recreation facility rental. About the 12th one down. Yeah. Recreation equipment forward. rental? No, oh, facility, rec facility rental. rental. I Got think it, it was all in one, and it didn't, that doesn't really make sense, especially now that we have the C5. We have so many, so much rental income coming from that also. I really wanted to break that up to, to be able to identify both yep. Of those line so, so recreation facility rental and 2020, 2021, we're saying any of the Friday Fest fees. Right. Under the actual, the 2021, 22 actual, the Friday Fest would be in that recreation mm. facility rental. 13,542. Yeah. And then 37,365. Yeah. And may, okay. And then we, we, we budgeted 27,000. Yeah. And we've received twenty-seven thousand. That's just the budget for this year. I don't know okay, off so the top of my head what we've done so far. Original amended. There's no difference. Correct. Um, and then the adopted is what we project, and so. This just brings up a question of why we're at 49000 for recreational facilities if that does not include Friday Fest revenue. Right, because that is now including the C5 uh, facility rentals. Is That's recreation facility rental all C5? Yes, it also includes parks when people rent. It's not just the C5. It's not just the C5, but that's including it. You know, most of these uh, revenue items, when we, we did a run rate, which means, you know, you just, when we started this, however many months of revenue we had and trying to project it, you know, we're kind of doing really well with that. And Friday Fest this year is really knocking it out of the park. Um, yeah, that's great. So. Yeah, I just... Wanted to understand that, and so I think having the C5 as a line, if we're going to detail anything, being able to detail what that building does on its own is very important. So uh, those are just, just comments and feedback if possible. Um, Council, any other questions, comments at this time? I have a, I have a couple of yes, things. Yes, please. Cherry Down Park. Cherry Down Park. I mean, we have it in the budget. We have for the new sign, we have, or whatever. But if we're not going to get this from the county, isn't it time that we stop discussing it and putting it in the budget? If we're not going to get this, and if the county is taking care of it, they're paying the bill, isn't it time for us to drop this? If we, you know, haven't been able to negotiate this. We Mayor, we, we are still in negotiations with the county on that. The latest message from the council was to strip down the narrative to these basic things. Um, we don't know if they're going to agree with that. Uh, it could, maybe they will, and maybe we might end up having it this next year. But if, if the council is just adamant that we don't want Sherry Down Park, that's a very valuable message for me to know. And it's, it's not in this next fiscal year budget, just to confirm, it's in, it's starting in 24, 25. We keep pushing it out. It's pushed mm -hmm. out. So it's not in this next fiscal year budget. I think it was at one point, at the very beginning. And then, it, to your point, it, we pushed it out within this year. It's been in many budgets. I did see it in this year, but I don't think it is. Are you talking about the sign? No, I just worry about the whole thing because it seems like it's been dragging along. And then now that I hear that it's about $75,000 a year to pay for one lifeguard, this is another expense. 
I just think it's something that we need to talk about and talk if we really want to pay for this. I, I think that's a valuable point. Um, for those of you who don't know, the, the county is considering um, pushing the cost of lifeguards off to those cities where they're serving if they're serving at a beach side park that was once owned by the county. Sherry Down Park could qualify for that with us. We're fortunate in that we don't actually own Sheridan Park right now, so they don't have anything on us for this. And that's a, a negotiation point in this current round with the county. We would want to know, can are we on the hook for that? Can we opt out of that? Yeah, definitely an unknown expense, but we're not on the hook for it right now, but we might be if we get Sheridan Park. So that's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Mayor Pro Tem, what we could do also is we are going to eliminate the line on the sign if we do keep moving this out and we'll just put it with the redevelopment because we're not gonna pay for a new sign if the city doesn't own the park. So um, we'll remove, not that we don't have to do it this year, but next year if, if uh, council decides they wanna keep it in there and keep moving it out, you'll, you won't see the sign thing anymore. That'll just be under redevelopment. It'll eliminate a line off there, but but then again, if you don't want it to be in there, then next year in 24-25, we will take it out. A, a lot of residents have told me that they're happy with what has been done over there with the improvements on the bathrooms and some of the improvements. And uh, I really haven't looked, but I know some of the people next door, Flores Del Mar, they've communicated that they're happy and they think that it should stay with the county. I'm just repeating what some of the residents have, you know, voiced to, to me. Thank you. To, to the Cherry Down Park point, um, I had a coffee with a cop there this past Monday, or yesterday, and uh, there was quite a number of people who attended there commented about how dirty it was. Mm how trashy it was. Um, so the county's falling down on their end. Mm -hmm. I'll have to go take a look. I think judge for myself. Thank you. I don't know when the, the boardwalk improvements, I mean, when in 2017, when we first got on the council, that boardwalk was not the boardwalk we saw today. To your point, that they did improve that back boardwalk all along there, along the beach and uh, kind of on the west side of the sea oats, the bathrooms were improved. But yes, I think the uh, the maintenance, the operation side, which is where I've never been one to think that we need to own the park. I just think we have the opportunity to, to, to work with our residents, figure out what do we want the park to be, and then work with the, the county uh, to, to, to see it happen and if there's skin in the game or something we want to do that's you know the, the residents want I think it's a good opportunity um, and we always thought I think getting control of the park was well, f was really important and so through owning um, and I think the last conversation where we left off Todd, was what they had sent over we really weren't interested in I think you heard that but you're saying that did not necessarily mean that if they come back with something, right, you, you're just, I think we would be, if they come back with something, I think we can address that yeah. at the future meeting. Yeah, my understanding of my marching orders are, we are still interested in the park, but we want to reduce the demands from this to this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I don't think we're faced with that one, other than the sign, right? I mean, that was a line item yeah. that's a couple of years out. Um, Mayor Pro Tem, is there any other things? Yeah, there was one. I have one other thing. Might not be a popular thing, but I do have something to say about this. Uh, I noticed that there was an increase in the budget for the Sheriff's Department. And I was just wondering, what, what do we get for that increase as a city? I mean, what's the justification for that increase? If you could explain annual, to me, thank annual you. Annual escalation, it's by contract. Right, and, on, and within the sheriff's department, on their end, obviously their costs are going up too. Right. Everything's relative. That really is the, probably the best 
that I can say because I, it's not like it's funding four more deputies or anything like that. So it's, those costs are going up based on everything. Inflation, uh, everything's relative. Uh, you know, if they're paying their employees, maybe they're paying their employees more or whatever the case may be. But uh, you can't, there's, there's no way that um, the sheriff or the fire department is going to just say, you know what, we're good this year. We don't need to raise anything. Uh, yeah, they they got to keep up with the cost of living too. We, we are how they get paid and their employees get paid more just like our employees get paid more every year and there's an annual escalation. Interesting. I just wondered what we're paying for. Okay, council. Working through this, this is a workshop. I don't think we're gonna be voting on anything tonight. Just talking through it and anyone in the public that wants to, to jump in, please just l let me know. Um, any other comments? Um, I, have, I have a question, um, page 29. Yes sir, page 29. The uh, adopted budget for the department is decreased by 133,000. Correct. That's the resiliency, the new resiliency department will be right. taken out of that department and yeah. on their own. But were other areas that were, that are showing up in the resiliency department, are they um, basically things that were redirected from other departments, other other projects? Yes, my understanding is that Dave and Zach sat down and went through last year's community education budget and said, what part, you know, yeah. what salaries, what are we taking with us to resiliency? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, another couple questions um, on page 23. We have Menis, Melissa, I can't even say. Um, Is it miscellaneous? Miscellaneous, income? there you go. Mm -hmm. I lost the word for a minute. Um, $45,000, where does that come from and how do we estimate Melissa? Yeah, that. <laughs> um, Surprisingly, a lot of miscellaneous income is um, maybe refunds um, from prior year. Um, also, we have a lot of insurance settlements. And so when we get those insurance settlements, those go into miscellaneous income. And we've had quite a few of those in the last few years. And instead of putting them towards the expense, the auditors like to see it as a revenue mm -hmm. item against then, the expense. Okay. Um, and then we had talked when I was talking to you guys about the short-term rentals income and how we had one form that said it was 104,000 and then in the budget it's 60,000. Did we figure out what? Yeah, remember that first column was more than, yeah, I think it was, was 21 and 22? Yeah, year yes. to date. Right. Remember the date at the top? That was for two years, I think. That wasn't... More than a one-year period. Right. Okay, so at the end of 2023, yeah, we. how much do we have? We went down. We had the end of 2022, we had 71,000. Right. And I don't know off the top of my head what the income is. Dave, you and I were working on that right. item earlier today for next week's council agenda. What's the um, it won't achieve that the annual revenue off of STRs? Off. Do you recall? Well, I recall what was in this twenty-three twenty-four budget. Okay, you Probably want to come on up? Okay. Where is that? Remember, we were working on that item earlier. Yes. Yeah. No, she's talking about the actual. Yeah, she's. I think Council Member Kellum's talking about. Right, I don't have the actual. Right. Yeah. 
which she's holding represents the two years. Okay, so that's the 104,000 yes. over two years. So, Mickey, what is your question about so why, why is there the number decreasing? It's 60,000 in here for income. For this year? For this budget. Where is that? I'm not sure where that number is coming from. from what page are you on, Councilmember Kellum? Um, what is it? I think it's 22. Where did I see? 22. Yeah, I see it. Vacation rental registration yeah. monitoring. We had 60,000 for, for this next year's budget. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, it's 23, 24. Mm -hmm. So why, why did it go down? I mean, I don't understand how we got to 60 well, from... What, what I want to make what? sure we find the line item before we go any further. I think we're all at page 22. What is the... Uh, item 321105. Yeah, I don't... 321105. Yeah. I, okay. I don't know. Okay. Is every council y'all following? I don't know yeah. that. Right. Mm -hmm. Vacation rental. Yes, please. Go ahead. I'm still not sure what the I question is. <laughs> I, I think that first column that you were talking about, right. that that okay, was, that, that when we were talking about it. From 2021 to October 2022. So now we're coming up on October 2023. Right. I'll have to get you that. I don't have the actual oh, revenue. I see. In yeah, front of those, me. I just, in, I guess I'll make a comment. In general, those revenues are go going to be constantly in a state of flux. Each year is going to be different than the, the other year because we have, we have, um, we don't always have a static number of vacation rentals in the city. There's, also, there's. Oh, well, sorry. This budget was done assuming this was before our vacation rental company went bankrupt. Right. So. Well, we, do we have any final numbers from? We that? do. I just don't have it in front of me. Yeah. Okay. I can definitely get that to you. Okay. And then. The and I can go back to the beginning of that contract okay. for the total. Thank you. Um. Okay. Yes. This is just a small comment, just a little comment. On page 114. 114. Uh, this is in the future. Uh, it says that... Kayak launches, okay, passive parks. And it, then it says, it lists with numerous kayak launches, passive parks along the route. Banana River Park, Manatee Sanctuary Park, and Center Street. Well, at Center Street, uh, the Port St. John River Authority will never allow a kayak or boat launch there. Let me never, um, never, never. I think never. it's page 115 on the new. I'm on page 114. Yeah, yeah. but I think. But do you have the old copy? Right. The no, new no. copy is 115. The Banana River I think Master this is Plan. This the brand new copy. Is this the Banana River Master Plan? Where do you have it? No, Are you on I'm PRCA just, 9? I'm looking at page 114. Okay. Are you I on PRCA? I think she's on PRCA 8. Are you on 8 or 9? 8. Because 8 doesn't say anything about kayaks. That's the well, one. I'm on page 114, but I thought that I just put this new one in today. Okay. Is, is it PRCA 9? Is it 9? PRCA 9. 9. Okay, so that's it's on page 115. Yeah, this is, this yeah. is the new one okay. here. It's maybe, one. I swear to God. Maybe Jeff can speak to that. I just wanted to point that out. Okay. That it will never, yeah. they won't allow it there. Yeah, it's in the future in 26, 27, and you're just pointing out that mm -hmm. it ain't going to happen, is what you're saying. Okay. 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 Council Member Davis, how are you doing? Anything? I'm doing good. I have no questions right now. Okay. Good deal. The percentage, I got a question, the percentage of uh, revenue, the total, when we add it all up, that is grant funded this year, I'm trying to figure out what page that was. I think, uh, I guess it, sh it shows up in a, in a few different areas, but the, the one I'm talking about is page 13. Now this one was an updated one, so I guess, but I, this number didn't really change. But if we go to uh, th this, Consolidated financial overview. A um, couple of questions on this page. The 
the grant line item is showing 1.6 million, 1,664,000 is what we, we expect to come in from grants this year. Yes. Which is, makes up 4.4% of our total revenue. Correct. Is, am I reading that right? Yes. Okay, that's awesome. So 4.4% so of the money we bring in is, is, is from grants. Uh, and that really is across the board in all funds, right? Yes, that is all funds. In, in the general fund, it's um, 950,000. Okay. Of that, um, I'll have to go to. So you're saying of the 1.6 million, uh, 950,000 of it is the general fund? Right. Um, wastewater has 127.5 of that, and then stormwater has 580,000. Okay, that's great, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, looks like the majority of it is general fund, just under a million yeah. dollars, 950,000. And the total, uh, the number that um, I don't understand at the very top, so cash forward, mm -hmm. can you explain how that yeah. top line item I it think you and changed? I, okay, you and I talked about this at the last meeting. It was a little, when we did the budget last year, yes. we recognized ARPA as was going to be grant revenue as we used it in this year. Mm -hmm. The auditors when they came, we recognized that as revenue last year, all as revenue last year. So that's why, so now we're using cash forward for the ARPA funds for this budget year. So the, so the original and amended right. on this one is different. Right. So the four million twelve thousand. I think we talked about this before the meeting last year. The four million twelve thousand included over three million dollars that we thought we were going to use in grant funding during this fiscal year, and that we would recognize that revenue as we used it. When the auditors came, they showed the actual grant revenue would be. They showed it all in 2122. So if you look at the federal and state grants under 2122 actual, they recognize that. So now, as we use our ARPA funds, it's a cash forward not being recognized as revenue during this year. So that's basically the unused funds. Um, well, yes, the unused funds are used as cash forward as we use the ARPA funds. So, so that, that the original budget of $7.7 .7 million included, I'm sorry, the $4 million included over $3 million we thought we were going to show as ARPA, as revenue, as a grant in this year. But the auditors recognized that all as income, so that's that $5.3 million in the 21-22 actual. So now we're using that $3 million cash forward as cash forward for this year on the projects, the ARPA projects. I don't know if I'm explaining it correctly. So the, the $1.6 million in this year's under right. federal and state grants line item, $1,600,000, right. does, does or does not include that cash forward? That does not include. That is those are that is made up of completely, completely new, Makes new grants, and then the cash that um, the ARPA funds that we would be using are up in the cash forward amount of the six point two million. So ARPA is not represented in federal and state grants. Line no, they either. are not. Okay, thank you. And I know no. we did go through this, yeah. but I didn't <laughs> I, fully grasp it, right. and, and it was it, right before the meeting. And John show, spent some. Yep. It, it, it did look a little skewed there. So if I was to add the cash forward, all of it is all 8.3 million. Are those funds all grant? 
No, some of that cash forward is projects that weren't completed from years before. And a lot of that will not be used this year because we did not use a lot of the ARPA funds mm -hmm. are not gonna be used in this year. They're gonna be used in next fiscal year. So it just kind of keeps rolling. It's rolling. We thought we were going to use almost $3 million in ARPA funds this year. And as you can see from the sheet we sent out, that's not happening. <laughs> so it's getting pushed again. What do we think in this proposed budget, what do we propose we're going to spend out of ARPA funds total? Is that what you gave me here? Uh, there's a, I, I have given you a sheet last time, I think, for the, um, yeah, I, the I waste have bar and stormwater, it was... Um, 2.3 million, that was mm -hmm. the clarifier and the three uh, stormwater projects. And so that was that. And then the ARPA, of course, now, uh, okay, so uh, you're gonna have, you know, for um, Veterans Park, now we're gonna have 425,000 and and then there'll be. Um, Is this the document you're talking about? Uh, yes, yes. Mayor, yeah. if this helps. That's the one that we gave them last so meeting. But oh, I yes. think your question is, yeah. So the, in the enterprise funds at the bottom, Mayor, you'll see the mm -hmm. $2.3 million we're going to use. The, those are the projects we would like Perfect. to get done this year. Yeah. So and, total ARPA will be $2.3 million, right, according to this sheet. And that money is going to come out of that cash forward $8.33 million? Yes. Well, this, that's, for the new, that's for the new year, so that's the I'm six talking million, about what we're considering million. to approve, what we want to spend in the 23-24 budget year. Yes. Is and we want to spend $2.3 million out of ARPA in, in, that yeah, fisc, in the upcoming yes, fiscal yes. year. And, 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 and if everything didn't get done, it's just going to roll forward. Understood. Yeah. But the intent is to get these projects done and use yes. the $2.3 million. So if I take the $2.3 million in ARPA to be spent this year... Ginny, I think you said yes. I just want to confirm that money comes out of the cash forward, that top line item. Right. And I have 2.975 for ARPA cash forward. Well, that doesn't, that's because that's not included. That's, that's just including those, those items you have in front of you. There's th that 2.3 is the wastewater and stormwater. Okay, so and, it's even more. Right. Yes. yes. 2.9 million in ARPA? Yeah. That's, that's general fund. So, just and then that gets some of that gets transferred to the enterprise funds. That's understood. how we have to account it. We have to pull but it in, in from cash forward. In the consolidated financial overview, the one we're looking at, page yes. 13, we're saying 2.9 million of our revenues can be found in the cash forward very top line item, and it will come out and be spent this year. So right. of the 6.2 million, I guess, right. two point, about yes, half of right. it's ARPA. And the other half is none of, there's no other grant money in that 6.2? No, it's, it's different projects that we um, anticipate not being completed, moving that money forward that to makes fund sense. this year. So Throughout can I just call that 3 million funds. roughly for easy math or, yeah, right. but well, uh, and then so I could take the 1.6 million this year from federal and state grants and add it, it'd be 4.5 million, if, right? If we added 2.9 million in ARPA and okay. 1.6 million, whatever that is, roughly, that is a, a better percentage of total grant funded projects Right, 4.4%, if I want to say with ARPA, should go up to, well, 4.5 million divided by 37 million, it's probably going to be 11 or 12%, I would assume. And you might, where I'm going with this is that 10% of our budget is actually grant funded. 4.5, roughly. <laughs> $4.5 million is coming in through federal and state grants. That's the equivalent of an average probably tax year uh, for what we bring in in millage rates. And so that number is really important because those types of projects allow some of them 
to get things done that we would normally have to do out of the general fund. And I, the way I approach it is try to figure out, well, now that we're getting some of our expenses offset by grants, and I know this doesn't work for all of them, and I can actually see some of the projects that are grant funded that it would not work with, but I think these are, these are good things that Can I just make one comment? You yes. also have to realize the money that's coming in um, as cash forward uh, for ARPA is also going out the general fund. So it come, this is just how we have to account for it. It's coming in the general fund, but $2.3 million is also going out into wastewater and stormwater. So you have a revenue item, but you also have an expense item that's basically for the same. So on page 45, uh, the non-departmental budget, mm -hmm. you know, you have a transfer to wastewater, transfer to stormwater. Those are ARPA funds going out to the enterprise funds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's 37.6 million in revenues, 37.6 out is the goal. I would, I'm just saying that 10% of the total revenues and if we spend that actual money and expenditures would be grant funded if it, if it ends up that way. Right, I would, yes, I would agree. Which is that. fantastic. Absolutely. And so the, the expenditures, Let's go to page 80, uh, let me get it here. 80, oh, I lost it. Seventy-eight, please. So seventy-eight is one we've talked about uh, last time and this budget, if we go back, we're approaching the 2023-2024 year. And if we can zoom in just a little to see 2013-14 year at least as high. Um, yeah, that's good. Per thank you, perfect. So if we just go back, you know, 10 years, and we look at 2013-14. That's okay. Um, and we've got our, book, our books too. What page is that? Uh, 78. Our total uh, ad valorem revenue that came in was $3.1 million roughly. So that's what we had to work with. And Flash forward to the very bottom highlighted gray line, the current proposed year. You can. No, Mayor, if I may correct you, the 3.1 is the tax. That's, that's the tax. Yeah, that's, that's the tax. Levy. Taxes that were realized from the 3.1. I just don't want to. I just want to say that that's the tax that was realized based on what the millage rate was. The 3.1 million. Uh, yeah. I'm talking about 3,224,410. That's 1415. Okay, yeah, and that's the taxes that were realized. Oh. That's the taxes realized. The, You're the, right. The no, item I'm... to the left is the to total sex taxable value and um I just went back 10 years yeah. and so you're right. I, I said it wrong 2014-15 is the one I was talking about 3 million because that's truly 10 years back I think mm -hmm. either one of them that today we look at revenue unprecedented you can't find a six anywhere and we're doubling so that is not necessarily bad but we are able to work with um, roughly 50 employees, or you know, uh, 56, same, and you asked about what are we getting in return. We are getting over a 100% increase in, in, in revenue here, and, and this is just ad valorem. 
And from this year to last year, that 15.66% is a, a, that one of probably top 15 highest tax increases. I mean, you go back to the early days. Well, that's you, not the tax increase. Or the increase in revenues, excuse yeah, yeah. me. Well, w if we were to ask, what is the percentage in of increase in revenues from ad valorem taxes, this would be the 15.66%. Ad valorem tax revenue goes from 5,576,782, and we, and, uh, which was 7.25% higher than the year before. And this year we're going 15.66% higher than last year. So we're doubling the amount of revenue. Whatever tax increase we agreed to last year, we're doubling it this year. Now let's go back to the 10% of our revenue is paid for in grants. It, Four it to is, it's not a, the tax increase that's being doubled, it's the revenue that's being doubled. The revenue, right. yeah. So, the impact that the tax increase of 3.57 or whatever the proposed millage rate of 3.5716 would have an effect on our revenue of 15.66%. Includes the new growth, which we talked about earlier. Yes, but I don't think that's a big change. In our CRA, some hotel, when hotels come online, that's a big difference. Yes, well, I mean, we can do that math. I'm just thinking, that, that this that we are we have enough funds to get what we need done, and so now take that six point four million and add in the four and a half million of grants that we have. So now we're at like ten million, and when we go to the pages, uh, well, we don't need to, to uh, go in back to page. 12, um, it, my, my, my statement here is, it, and I'll stop talking after this, is that we can find a way, is it 12? Um, was it 13, thank you. 13. Is that we can find a way to make make some adjustments because the 27, uh, there was a time in Cape Canaveral not too long ago that we spent 20 million or less. And when we go back in the actuals, which we can't see here, but yeah, this is a great view. 2021, we were under 30 million. But if you actually go back, and I was looking at the previous budget books, one year prior and maybe the year prior, th this 29 million, I remember voting on it. It was a big jump. We were going, we were 15, 20, 15, 20. We had some debts and it rolled forward. And just the actuals that expensed. We went from the 20s, now we're, now we're pushing the 30s. And then this year, now we're going to push the 40s. And I know four and a half million is, is grants. But this is an opportunity for us to, to hopefully not do some of these projects this year or figure out ways to make some cuts. If there's a will to do that, um, I, I hope I hope we can. And the the statement that was provided to us uh, at the last meeting in regards to like um, rollback rate, which is extremely helpful, middle of the road rate, is that the words you know general fund will have a deficit. It would have a deficit based on a budget that's proposed that's much higher than any budget. So I think that we have a surplus compared to last year with the four and a half million in grant funding and the record highest uh, six, six million for the first time in the history in revenue, 15% higher than last year. So my hope is that we can get closer uh, that rollback rate is, I, I think, where we should be targeting and below. And that's all can I have to say. Thank you. Can I, Mayor, Just, I'd oh. like to make some comments on that. Uh, you said that there was an increase last year, 2022, 2023. We, we, we went down 
last year at 3.4322. 2021, 2022, we at 3.5755. If we do adopt the 3.5716, that's lower than what we had in 2021, 2022. My point is we, we have, um, things are going up. Things cost a lot more money. So it's like a, a normal thing that it would cost more. So I don't think that it's so outrageous, but I'm just pointing out, last year we did the 3.4322, which we lowered, uh, we lowered it a little. So this year, even if we go to 3.5716, it's lower than what we had in 2021, 2022. And I understand that yes, the assessed value is more. However, this is what our financial staff has said is going to work for the best for our community to do the things that we had talked about at our strategic planning. So that's all I have to say. Thank can you. I, can I just make one comment? Just, just to reference what uh, Mayor Morrison was saying. Uh, to go to rollback in the general fund, so it would be, uh, we would have to cut 500, approximately $571,000. So I just wanted to reference that, that amount. So, you know, that, that's just, that's in the general fund. The CRA, um, what that would uh, reduce the CRA could be, um, that would be swallowed up by the, some contingency. It would be $126,000. We could take that off contingency. So I just wanted to, you know, put a number to what we were talking about. So, you know, as it sits, except for maybe that, uh, the line item that you may approve at the next meeting, which would take 48,000 off contingency, uh, to go to rollback, it would require cutting $571,000 from the general fund budget, so. And Thank I, you. And what I, I'd like to add to the mayor, I, I see how the mayor's analyzing these things. Now, the thing is, is, if everything got done the way it was supposed to each year, and as you move forward, then it all just falls right into place. But it doesn't. So if there's things that didn't get done, okay, now the budget may be greater because the, these expenditures have not yet been realized. So um, every year has to be taken in its own world, so to speak, or, or context, because there is nothing packed in this budget that council doesn't know about. What you see is what you get, and to get what you see is, and I'm not trying to make a song here, okay? Because uh -oh. three, three, what you see is what you get. 3.5716 is where we would have to be to get what you said. Now, when Jenny said, you know, you want to go to rollback, what happens? Well, you know, if you drop 500 and some K, then what would you take out of the budget? Oh, geez, Veterans Park's about 700 K. You could remove Veterans Park and you could achieve, you could achieve rollback. Um, it's going to affect the CRA too. So those are the trade-offs you have to make. But there's nothing in this budget. Uh, we, we've trimmed this budget. This budget is so far trimmed down to this particular millage rate to give you what you wanted. And we only have $150,000 in the end. We're only gonna have $150,000 in contingency. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to make that, just make that point. I also just wanna point out, and I know we maybe don't compare ourselves to other cities, but I do wanna say that um, the, the um, graph that's on page, 80, 80 is now updated with everybody's proposed millage. Um, out of the 14 cities listed there, only West Melbourne and Grant Valkyria are proposing a rollback rate this year. And just That's just informational only. <laughs> Jenny, so the asterisk that was on the last one isn't here, which means these are all... These are the proposed that they were going... Uh, 
That'll go out on the trim notices that exactly. they won't exceed. Exactly. It'll, but it certainly doesn't. We won't know what they end up voting in. I guess they we could all right. go we don't down, know until September. but it won't be. Right. We all okay. That's that's really helpful right. and latest info. Yes, right. thank you that for that. Latest, yes, because that's something I've always yeah. wondered. Is you know, is it current? And uh, I knew that it was difficult to get every city yeah. to you know or figure out their. <laughs> well, we their, have an email chain that goes through, but sometimes you have to get on the phone with them too. But uh, yeah. So the uh, the other thing with West Melbourne, I'm very proud of our, of our millage rate, and and I think. I'm, I mean, the way West Melbourne does, I'm not convinced that they're they're any better off than than, than us uh, because this, they've got line items on their tax bill that we don't see. Right. This proposed fire. exactly. Yeah. It's, I think it's 0.74 something. Yeah. And it's not included in that. I 1. compared 9. a 550,000 homestead house to a five. Or no, no, it was yeah, it was a 500. Yeah, it was 550,000 non-homestead house in West Melbourne to a 560,000, I tried to find the closest, in Cape Canaveral, two non-homesteads, and uh, we paid less taxes than that person. I don't know if that was a true apples to apples, but it was, right. you know, roughly, so, so there's many paths, I think, um, I, I, and to and get, also, I was going to, I was just going to say, make one remark here. When you, you got to be careful because when you try to go to rollback consistently, what happens is you do end up saying, you know what, we could do without this thing now. And the problem is, is if you keep doing that, your list grows and the cost of everything with inflation, the cost of everything's even more. So for instance, as Veterans Park, if we say we're not going to do it this year, I don't know. Next year, it could cost 1.1 million. I don't know. We'll have to go get the bids and Sounds if we about get, right. get like that. <laughs> so, so anyway, we just got to be careful that if we don't try to get done the things that are sitting right here, it's just going to cost more, and you start to fall behind because it's like, oh, you know what? Veterans Park's gone away. Now next year comes, and now we're right at that cusp again, and there's something else. And if we try to go to rollback mirror, then now there's something else that needs to be cut. Well, then does that project ever get done, or do we just pay through the butt for it years, you know, years ahead? So it's just a I think about that, too, with the, the City Hall project. <clears throat> we got it in here when we did, but we paid $4.297 million, just over four. In Cocoa Beach, I just heard their latest estimate, Brown same size City Hall is now $11 million. And when you look back on the things you've accomplished, you can say, I'm glad we did that then. But when you're looking forward to it like they are right now, it's a very scary number to be, be swallowing at that time. But it's only going to get worse the longer you wait, to John's point. And I think we've done things so smart because, not to use Cocoa Beach as an example, but you look what Cocoa Beach did. They built a separate firehouse. They built a separate police station. And now they're building a separate city hall. And, you know, all I'm saying is, is I think in this city, if we were faced with that, if the police and fire were ours and whatever, we might have did things more, try to build one big complex and maybe save three or four million dollars. And that was two or three years ago. Yeah. You know, so the way they did it, Mayor, I mean, if you really study it, you'd be like turning your head like saying, why didn't they do this together? Mm -hmm. So anyway. Mr. Mayor, can yes. I can I ask John a question? Do you can you provide by department the percentage of increases in their costs of, of goods? Anything they have to purchase for their, for like uh, wastewater? What it, do you have any kind of feel for cost increases? Go ahead. Oh, you want, um, well, that is a loaded, that is a uh, loaded question, Council Member Willis. <laughs> I don't think, I mean, June is, June's back here. I mean, she could tell you that chemicals might have went up 50% last year. I don't know. That's a very difficult thing. You're talking about every line item. And, well, no, no. I mean, I mean that's on, kind on of. On average, bud. Uh, if you're center. saying average overall with operational expenditures, let's forget about capital, let's just do right. operational no, expenditures. Just, if you're talking about that, and I said, well, last year June spent 200K, but this year it's 250K, then your next question would be, 
Well, John, what did June spend 50 extra K on? And that could be spread throughout. I mean, that's a very tough nut to crack. It could be done, but that's, that will require a lot of work. Uh, we'd have to, if you really want us to look at that, because in administrative costs, if we, if we were right. at 100,000 and now we're at 175,000, you're not gonna just, you're gonna ask me, what did we specifically do I could look back and see what it is, but that's a lot of, well, this went up, that went down, that went over there. Well, we we bought this because it broke. That's why I wanted to know if it was easy to do. It is not easy to okay. do, sir. It is, it is absolutely, it would be very difficult. For instance, like if I have four computers break tomorrow, I don't have four computers up in the IT room. I have two. Now I got to go spend... Three thousand mm -hmm. dollars more for the two more computers. So he's saying there's fifteen varieties of apples and twenty varieties of oranges. Right, right. My point being, we're paying way more for the same type of items today than we did ten years ago. Oh, absolutely. Uh, are we ready for a motion to adjourn? Because we're going to have many other budget workshops. So, oh, this council can no. do what this, can, the majority like to wants make, to do. I'd like majority to make a motion role. to adjourn the budget There's workshop at this time, since we have many other budget workshops and we've had our questions answered and we'll be delving into this again. Many other budget uh, workshops. Mayor, it Thank may you. be helpful to review the schedule on uh, page, what page is that on, John, the schedule of meetings for the budget? I respectfully have to honor the, the motion and the second to adjourn, um, but the city manager is asking Page for 17, a little time. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, council. I just, I just want to make sure. Are y'all okay with letting the city manager? I just want to talk about the schedule here, page 17. Yes, I think it's fine. Uh, just just yep. so we know what- So what in relevance to the motion on the floor to adjourn? Yes. Final item. So uh, today's date is August 8th, so we are at the budget workshop meeting right in the middle. Um, a little bit further, Mia. Right there in the middle, August 8th. So what we have ahead of us, we have September 6th, we've got the special council meeting, the first public hearing on the budget. Then yeah. we've got 915 is the publication. And then the 20th is the special council meeting, it's the second public hearing on the budget. So there's just those two meetings left that are scheduled for this. Two hearings. Right. So there's no more workshops. No more planned workshops. This is the final workshop. I mean, unless council decides you want to hold another workshop. I got more items I want to talk about, but I certainly don't want, if there's no appetite to reduce the budget, I don't want to waste anyone's time. I think that's what we're trying to do. Should we, last year we reduced it. They proposed with this thing in the middle of the road. If we don't want to reduce it, we don't waste people's time. I'd like to reduce it. And that's going to require some, some work. Um, or, you know, staff might come back. Well, they've done some homework for us and shown how it would impact the contingency. There's potentially other areas, but. Um, I would like to have another workshop as well. Are you asking if we would go to rollback? Is that where you're, you're aiming at for? Or middle of the road. Um, less uh, move towards rollback so less than what we're seeing today is better than that so i yes i think i would support um reducing it i'm willing to talk okay um well, we're here, and, and I know that, that that we got a motion and a second to adjourn, and I think we need to respect that. Um, what, what do we, I think three want to stay, two might want to go, or do we want to stay? Can we compromise and work, maybe go a little bit longer here and work through it? Or do you want to, I think you made the motion to adjourn on the assumption that we have many more workshops. And I think we just discovered we, we don't. I thought that all of the questions were asked, that people were going through asking the questions that they had. 
that they were prepared to ask those questions. So I thought we were finished ask, asking questions. You've asked a couple of times, do you have any other questions? And no one responded. So I just thought that that was it for tonight. And maybe if we went back and reviewed it, and then we do have the budget hearing. Yeah, no, no, I agree. No, the hearing is an opportunity to talk about it again. <laughs> Um, I just think that as long as I'm willing to, to flesh this out at the hearings, that's fine if, if, we, if we want to move and, and use those. But I just don't want to get into those hearings and say, we've already been through this. We've already worked through this. We need to move forward. We've, and, and so, and especially at that time, staff has got it sealed up, ready to go, and they need to have some certainty in what we're going to do. I mean, that's really important. And, but but yeah, if we're if we're willing to do less, it, you know, it it comes down to where do we where how do we make that happen? If there's a proposal from our city staff, or if this council's got some ideas, we can work and at the next public hearing bring that back. But I again, another workshop might be better. So, Mr. Mayor, yep, I think that um, another workshop would be better, especially after this next coming. Um, Council meeting, there's things on the agenda that will affect the budget, I believe. Um, okay. You know, the short-term rentals, uh, the solar, if we're going to get into the solar light uh, charging stations, and a few other things. So I think maybe a budget meeting after the council meeting to see where we are and then have another workshop. The council meeting is on... A week from today, 15th. 15th. So did the agenda come out today too? Yes, it yeah. Did. Oh wow. Is that a first time ever? And can't yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's you saying I wasn't going to be been working on. Holy, wow. I think, uh, Mayor, or if, if Mickey is saying that we want to talk as a council after that meeting about scheduling another budget workshop after that meeting, or maybe in discussion after the council meeting, we could talk about it there. Is that what you're saying, Mickey? Well, I'm just saying after the next council meeting, we'll know more about what other things have been coming up that yeah, have to true. go in the budget. Right. So, so but at this not point, gonna be in the budget. I, I don't think we're, I don't, I'm, I'm assuming there's not consensus to try to schedule another workshop tonight, but I think you're saying let's be open to it and maybe talk about it next week at the council meeting. Well, I, I just think, well, I think, um, yes, yes, we, that's better. And I would just ask that if we did another budget workshop, that I at least have one week right, that's between right, then and September 6th. It takes me a few days to, if we're going to do some changes or, you know, so, you know, before, before August 30th. Would, would August 22nd work? <clears throat> August 20, uh, Council Member Willis is, proposed, is asking if August 22nd, would work. It's, it's after the council meeting. It does that satisfy Jenny's deadline? Six. You're looking at that September sixth date, right? And you yes. want enough lead time. I, I agree. That would work. And I like to give it to you guys a few days before. <laughs> yes, that would. Um, Mayor, I, I will be out of town on the twenty second. I will be in Austin, Texas. But. I mean, Mia can handle acting city manager. I think we should just talk about it next week. I think we can talk about it. There's just too, there's too much. It's just drumming up the same things over and over again. I think enough is enough. I mean, what is there to talk about? The mayor, asked if, the mayor asked if we had any other questions. And well, we don't want to, I'll know. clarify my intent there. I can see how, when I'm saying, okay, anything else, if that's perceived as I'm ready to wrap up, it's me uh, periodically and consistently asking, going down the line. I don't mean it as just to try to keep the, moving, the meeting moving along. Um, I think we did have a few more questions and concerns, but I mean, I, I think we should schedule for August 22nd. If it turns out that after the meeting we decide we don't need it, then we can. If I may make just one statement, 
The whole thing about having another budget workshop, because council has all spoken here, would be predicated on looking potentially to cut things out of the budget. Because if you stay where we're at, then we could achieve, we could achieve what's in the budget. So I think if you do that and you go down that road, the one thing I'd be careful with is, of course, the big ticket item is Veterans Park, but some of the other items that are out here, they are associated with, with they contain like, you know, the mitigation where we get the grant if we get, say, I'm just using an example. I think we got some people having it. But we get 65% if we do it and we have to pay to 35%. I think we got three or four of those things. So council has a very difficult <laughs> road of decisions ahead when you get into looking at what you may want to cut because, you know, you may be having to cut grant money too. So and just to bring that up. I'm sorry to keep saying Veterans Park, but as your finance director, it's the one council member, Callum, I'm sorry, but it sticks out like a sore thumb when, you know, if the millage has to come down, I don't see where else you can cut unless you cut many of these others that have those grant monies affil uh, affiliated with them. So, and that eliminates all the work staff did, which we spent a lot of time and money getting those grants. So I just want to bring that to your attention. I, I'd like to say, Mayor, I'm, I would like to see all this done. So I am leaning towards keeping it at the 3.5716. So just so you know, that's, that's where I'm leaning on. I appreciate that. Yes, that's helpful because there's no, it's that's where we should start the conversation. I'm I'm leaning toward that too. I second that, and also um, I think that you know that way we can get everything done that we have talked about at strategic planning, and we did give consent on those things. And I we do want to get Veterans Park done. When we start something, we should finish it. Okay, so uh, August 22nd is, is, is I thought that we had, well, I thought that we do have a motion on the floor, Mayor. To adjourn? Yes. Uh, there is a motion and a second on the floor to adjourn. I think we've been engaging in discussions around the, the, uh, that, and if, I think, you don't even need a, a majority to adjourn. Uh, I think you could, two or two or more can adjourn, but on the other side, three can also, I guess, meet. Be nice to have some guidance. We're at a workshop. You know, I, I don't think we're taking any action, and we don't want this to be painful, but uh, I understand. Uh, Councilmember Willis, Councilmember Callum, it sounds like y'all are willing to try and, and figure out ways to reduce this. Do we want to do this tonight or find a date that could work in the future? I think that's what it comes down to. I think August 22nd and, okay. you know, one more go at it if to see what we can do or what we can come up with. And it would be helpful for us because this budget contains, you know, what what the directors have said they need, what you've said you need in strategic planning. So if you do another budget workshop, it will be very helpful to us if you came with ideas, you know, of what maybe you could cut and, you know, we can discuss them. That would be very helpful for us. Okay. okay. Don't, wouldn't you want to wait until next week to see what happens next week? It, that's what we're talking about, August and 26th. I know, but I mean, why... Do you want to schedule an additional workshop till we find out where we're at next week after, you know, during the meeting that we're going to have next week? Do you see what I'm saying? And another reason, if Mayor, I think it might work better to hold off on the discussion of additional workshops until the council meeting is because of staff schedules. I know I won't be here, Daniel won't be here, and Mia can't be acting city manager and city clerk at the same time. But we might be able to come up with alternate dates around or soon after that, that could work, that we'd be ready to propose at next week's council meeting. So we could accomplish what we wanted just in a much more organized way. Well, you have all of us here now, and it sounds like 22nd will work. And I think 
that window that, that Jenny was discussing between the six is a short window. And I'm saying, um, the, I'm saying the 22nd won't work for us. Yeah. I, no, I understand. Okay. And it, okay. I, I was, it, it works for us. It doesn't work for you. Right. We've got the limitations of the sixth pushing up against with lead time. And so it's a tight window. When do you, um, Excuse me, Mayor. So, we, so basically, at the Tuesday meeting on the fifteenth, we you would come with some dates there. We would vote then, and we would be a week out. I'd be prepared to answer what dates the council meeting is available. That I'm here, that me is here, and we can fully and staff. And we would this. have enough notice time. Yeah. That's all I'd be concerned give about. Jen and John, and enough time. Yeah. Okay. We yes. may not even have a full council, you know, for that. Well, I mean, it would be a workshop. There's not any action. <laughs> okay. So is that okay? Does that work for you? Yeah. They can, then they can find things that can work instead of... Councilmember Willis, we okay? Yeah. Okay, the motion on the floor to adjourn. Anyone opposed? Say nay. Seeing none, any reports or anything need to be stated? No, sir. None? Okay. Meeting adjourned. Thank you for your patience.